Thanks for tuning in to Popular Cruising. You're watching our review of the newly remastered The Mary 2 from Cunard Line. As a genuine ocean liner capable of frequently crossing the Atlantic Ocean, the Queen Mary 2 is one special cruise ship. Starting with the accommodations on board, my wife and I enjoyed a nicely remodeled Britannia balcony stateroom that has since replaced CRT televisions in the corner with modern flat panel televisions on the wall. Overall, the new decor is a splendid improvement over the original design. It's only unfortunate that rust stains in the ceiling have been painted over with the wrong color. But these newly commissioned black and white photographs are exquisite. Balconies have been mostly refreshed, but are already showing signs of new rust. But the beautiful Atlantic Ocean views can never be beaten. Great storage is even more plentiful now with the removal of the television in the corner. But the handsome new cabinet knobs are difficult to grip. Meanwhile, bathrooms are unchanged, including the flaking finish on the cabinet poles. But most disappointing is that grungy shower pans have not been refinished. Still, cabins are very comfortable, including super plush beds. Other cabin categories include entry-level Britannia inside staterooms. As well as a handful of inside staterooms with an atrium view of the grand lobby below. Even ocean view staterooms without a balcony are very well appointed. New to the remastered Queen Mary 2 are Britannia single ocean view staterooms. For solo travelers available in two different configurations. Higher in category still are the Britannia Club balcony staterooms. And the Princess Suite is one of the first in the premium grills category. Followed by the larger Queen Suite. Stepping up yet again are the penthouses, with a separate living area and bedroom. And at the front of the ship are uniquely shaped royal suites, with living and dining areas around the bend, and a lovely master bedroom. But the most plush on board are the duplexes with two levels and a stairwell leading to the bedroom. And the best of the best is the Grand Duplex. With even more luxuries. And as for activities on board, the hub is the Grand Lobby and Central Corridor, lined with wonderful bronze sculpture paneling, and leading to a newly opened up atrium space, now free of its former pair of elevators for more space on the way to the purser's office. The ship's unique mezzanine levels are great corridors for playing games. and lead to the Connections conference rooms and Internet Center. Meanwhile, a great interactive exhibit on board tells the stories of the Cunard line, including iconic former passengers like Walt Disney and his family. And for picking up your own portraits, you can head to the photo gallery, including its new digital kiosks. For a gallery of a different kind, the art selection on display is better than the Park West collection usually found on other cruise ships. There's even a Helen Mirren signed piece on display in the Empire Casino, in a space that has been reduced some during the recent remodeling. Just above are several shops on board. From high-end retailers to logo items like signature Cunard teddy bears. A great place to lounge about is the cozy chart room. 
or just reading a good book or enjoying a tasty cocktail. The Queen's Room is one of the most palatial on board and serves as a multi-purpose entertainment and activity venue. including even fencing classes. Just next door, G32 is the ship's more modern nightclub. Named after the ship's hull number. And a fun double-decker venue. That even overlooks the Queen's Room. Play zone is the ship's kids facility, with areas for different ages, from youngsters to teenagers. Including an outdoor splash pool and small jungle gym. Even the promenade deck is more epic on the Queen Mary 2. Situated much higher than the cresting waves below. And fully encircling the ship with complete teak decking. Inside from which is the relaxation room and lobby of the Canyon Ranch Spa Club. And its multiple levels. To reach the salon above scenic forward-facing views. There's also a fitness center downstairs and a sublime thermal suite in the center of it all, including a rejuvenating philosotherapy pool and waterfall deluge in which to soak under. Taking the glass elevators up one deck will bring you to the library and bookshop. Which still has to be the best such venue at sea. For its spectacular views alone. Unfortunately, the adjacent bookstore has drastically reduced its selection. Heading upstairs once again will bring you to the Churchill Cigar Lounge. Which is thankfully enclosed from the Great Commodore Club Observation Lounge next door. Seen here in the early morning with its shades drawn. Just behind the bar is a spectacular scale model of the ship. Which I absolutely would love in my own home. And next door on the other side is the boardroom. Taking one last ride up in the elevator will bring you to the Atlantic Room. For card games and meetings. Just outside from which is one of the great observation decks. With views overlooking the dramatic swooping bow. As well as spectacular vistas towards the stern from underneath the bridge wings. And at the very top of the ship is the lookout for even more views. Behind newly installed cabins is the sun deck and relocated sports center. For court games. And driving practice. Meanwhile inside is the fairways and photo studio. And during less than sunny weather, the Magrodome and Close Pavilion Pool and Bar are a great option. As well as a fun place for table tennis. But back outside are shuffleboard and other deck games. Underneath the bold Queen Mary 2 signage. 
farther back are the newly expanded kennels for cats and dogs, including a New York fire hydrant, Liverpool lamppost, and expanded deck space. Just below is the exclusive Grills Terrace for sweet guests, complete with its very own whirlpool, and plush outdoor furniture. Taking a swift stroll downstairs will bring you to the terrace and minnows pools. Seen here still partly under refurbishment. And morning cleaning. And just to prove that the Atlantic isn't always gray, here's the same terrace on a sunny day. Dining on board begins at the Britannia Restaurant Main Dining Room. Easily one of the most beautiful spaces on board any cruise ship. and certainly a throwback to the original Queen Mary. Generally appetizers like this salmon roulette and black forest ham and Swiss cheese beignets are delicious. But entrees like Peking duck breast and surf and turf are a bit lacking in flavor profile. But desserts like Jamaican banana and rum cake are better. Next door, the Britannia Club restaurant offers open seating meals for club guests. And for traditional pub lunches, the Golden Lion Pub is the place to be. Not only for a pint of your favorite draft beer like Guinness, but for favorites like tasty fish and chips as well. But the biggest surprise hit is the new Godiva chocolate bar at Sir Samuel's. Where you can still get coffees, but also decadent white milk and dark chocolate fondues some of the best ice cream sundaes, and more. A space that used to sell photo equipment is now the Cunard Wine Academy for specialty food and wine pairings. And for bubbly tastings, the Champagne Bar is home base, complete with its awesome mermaid sconces. Back in the Queen's Room during the afternoon is where you'll find traditional tea time. With classical live music accompaniment, and of course, great teas, finger sandwiches, pastries, and the most delicious of scones. Replacing the former winter garden is the newly expanded Corinthia Lounge. A handsome venue for live music, specialty coffees, and complimentary cafe bites. Some of which were actually better than at other restaurants on board. Like a yummy pulled pork flatbread savory filled crepe, and sweet chocolate eclair. And just off from the newly chic carpeted elevator lobby is the vastly reconfigured King's Court Buffet. Thanks to the removal of the atrium's elevators, the food stations are now more widely spread out. And the overall decor is now much brighter and cheerier. Food quality has improved too, but can sometimes be a bit bland. A side section of the buffet is dressed up at night for specialty dining, like La Piazza for Italian, which was the opposite of the main dining room, with an underwhelming Ville Rosette's appetizer, but a deliciously peppery shrimp and scallop entree, and a nicely plated dessert send-off. Besides burgers during the day, the chef's galley prepares made-to-order pastas and pizzas during the evening, and the complimentary pizzas that we took back to our room were some of the best at sea as were the very juicy room service burgers as well. During sunnier deck conditions, the Alfresco Boardwalk Cafe would be another casual eatery option as well. Elsewhere, guests and grills accommodations get exclusive access to the grills lounge and bar. And just those in the Princess tier can dine at the Princess Grill restaurant. while those in the Upper Queen's tier can dine exclusively at the Queen's Grill restaurant.
Meanwhile, for specialty dining accessible to everyone, there's the new Veranda Restaurant. For French and Spanish inspired cuisine, amid circus decor. Like a tasty brulee cheese on mousse bouche. Pleasantly fishy Scottish langoustine ravioli. A clever mushroom and truffle cappuccino soup. A beef filet that would have been better without the escargot and could have been more tender. An exquisite Alfonso mango with coriander meringue. And a sweet finish of pedophores. We liked it so much we even went back for a lunch of tasty tuna. A better filet. And a final banana treat. From a line less known for entertainment, the Queen Mary 2 sure has a great selection. From a Dixieland jazz brunch from the excellent house band in the Corinthia Lounge. To great live instrumental concerts in the Queen's Room. which also hosts several popular dance balls. Backed once again by the Live House Big Band. Up from Connections, and directed to by Impressive Statuary, is the Illuminations Planetarium. Cunard's excellent lecture series, movie screenings, and signature dome films. And the Royal Court Theatre houses everything from Q&A sessions with special guests like jazz master Herbie Hancock, to theatre performances by RADA, the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art, like this compilation of William Shakespeare death scenes in The Bard on Board and more traditional review-style musicals like Rhythm of the Night. Which feature better dance performances than singing. The vocals were honestly a bit subpar. But the dancing, as you can see here, was on point. And some special effects were a nice touch. As was expert stage motion. and the use of the video wall was particularly cool. Now just enjoy some of these fun visuals from the show. Thanks so much for watching. Please feel free to subscribe to our channel, watch our other videos, and visit popularcruising.com.